today. From First Energy Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio, it's a special Halloween presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. on the Pittsburgh Steelers. We are the so-called rock and roll capital of the world, Cleveland, Ohio, at First Energy Stadium on the shores of Lake Erie. The folks here in Cleveland, even though all the down years have never stopped supporting their hometown guys, and we got evidence of that a moment ago as the Browns made their entrance. They are ready to do battle with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Again, everyone with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Browns ball club. They can't be any better as we hit the halfway mark. A perfect 7-0 on the year. And when we looked at this team in August and we looked at the schedule, we thought they had the potential to get off to a hot start. But I don't think either of us expected 7-0. And, and we will not get a run back here to start. It's a touchback, and it will come out to the 25. So out come the Steelers now for their first drive. They'll be led by their now 30-year-old quarterback in his eighth season in the NFL. It's Derek Carr. And you've got to think that they've got to be feeling pretty fresh. You know, coming off of the open week, didn't have to play, right? Gives them a chance to rest up a little bit, heal some of those aches and pains, and excited about playing again. That really rekindles things a little bit. I want to see how they come out and establish themselves here early. And that bye week coming right where they want it in the middle of the schedule. The game's first play produces six yards, brings up second down. Well, this defense for the Browns, they were terrific last week in the win over Denver. It was a little bit enlightening talking with the defense coordinator about their performance last week because the feeling was that it was a good, solid performance. They did what they needed to do to get the job done and get the win, but definitely a few lapses that they're looking to correct. A tough spot here on their opening drive. This is third and seven. Now Carr. And it's hauled in by Austin Hooper. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Out of the pistol, here's Williams. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. Now Carr. They'll set up the screen. This is Williams. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Here's Carr. Finding Williams once more, complete. Only two yards, and it'll be a punt on their opening possession. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area that they want him involved, just as you said. They want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. And he's going to be tackled inside his 10-yard line. You may hear a few words from his head coach on that decision. So here comes the Browns offense with a long field ahead. And they'll be let out by their mobile quarterback, standing 6-4, it's Colin Kaepernick. So this is where we find out about the game plan and the trust factor, don't we? In this situation, the natural thing is take care of the ball, run it inside, everyone cover it. Just, you know, get yourself some room and let your punter punt it out of there. But when you really got a QB you can trust, you might want to take a little shot early and try to create some space. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. Again to Henry. And they're able to bring him down at the 20. And Derrick Henry with the ball in his hands. What a sight to behold because power and speed 
involved in every touch for him. Coming off another spectacular season with the Titans, it became the first since LaDainian Tomlinson in 2006 and 2007 to win two straight rushing titles, and he did it with style, too. Just the eighth man to top 2,000 yards and the first since Adrian Peterson in 2012. He has his sights set on another 2,000-yard season. Out to his left. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Second down, here's Henry. And down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. So this game, Charles, you know, we talk about potential unbeaten seasons a lot. It feels like every year at some point in the season we talk about that. But this is one of those games where if you're unbeaten, you got to be careful. You can't take this one too lightly. You're exactly right about that. And by rights, this should be a cakewalk. Almost a week off. Let the starters run up the score in the first half. Backups get to play in the second. But you and I both know that funny things sometimes happen when you think this way. So it's incumbent upon the starters to really play well to make it work for this team. No score after one on EA Sports. On first down, Carr. Oh, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Picked up by the linebacker, C.J. Mosley. And the Browns will have solid field position here as they take over at the 45-yard line. The Cleveland offense ready to go. And they are trying to create some separation within the division. And look, C.D., I know that this is still the first half of the season, but this is a big matchup no matter where it falls because these are the top two teams right now in that division. And if you can build a bit of a cushion as you head towards the second part of the season, that allows you to survive the expected injuries, potential upset losses, all of those things, and still be in good shape. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted, thrown back across his body. Derwin James with a pick. And the Steelers are going to take over here at their own 22-yard line. They begin the drive with Williams. And he'll take it ahead to the 28-yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. Meanwhile, Carr's throw here pulled in by Lazard. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. Cam Sims, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. It looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. Carr. It's complete to Williams. And he gets this only to the 41, not near enough for the first. Here's Matt Bosher now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Now it's Lockett. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And the Browns will take over with a first and 10 deep in their own territory. Now a first and 10 at the 11.
They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Eluding the pressure right. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. Defensively, Charles, they continue to really limit this offense as far as yardage goes. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been assignment sound, staying in their lanes, keeping proper leverage, and communicating well, too. Flushed out right. On the run, he'll let this go deep right side. And it looked like he got the feet down, did he? Yes, it's a catch. And all the way in, touchdown, Cleveland. Travis Kelsey, 89 yards. And the Browns on just two plays have taken the lead. After a fairly uneventful first quarter, that last play, that'll make a few highlight clips. It certainly will, and you're exactly right. The first quarter almost felt like a feeling out process, didn't it? Both teams, okay, what are we gonna do? Looks like they ramped things up just a little bit to start the second quarter. Justin Tucker for the extra point. It's up and through to make it 7-0 Browns. The long touchdown pass gets him six on a very, very tidy two-play drive that time. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And they had lost two in a row prior to getting the open week last weekend, so potentially a chance for them to get away for a bit, heal up, and come back strong. That's what the hope is anyway, because you're going to find out now with your team, are you still focused on being the best you can be for the rest of the season with the things going the way they have earlier this year? Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. And the Steelers on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and 11. Working from the gun, it's Carr. He'll drop this down to Williams, and he's going to be brought down short of the first at about the 31-yard line. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. Here's Matt Bosher now, as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Returnable for Lockett. A very good return there, give him an even 20 yards. And the Browns will take over, first and 10. And here now is Travis Kelsey. It's really been a blistering start to the season for him so far. He's on pace to blow past 1,000 yards. The good receivers, it's interesting, though. You put extra coverage on them. They probably view that as a challenge. All right, I'm going to go after this. You put one guy on them, then they feel disrespected, and they want it to show how, how do you cover it. You're exactly right. That's an insult, right, especially the year that he's having. But I just have to go ahead and not – I'm not going to insult him. I'm going to respect it. I'm sending as many people as possible. But one of the reasons he's having this type of a start is despite that type of coverage, he finds a way to what we call uncover late. Ball's thrown, even though there's coverage there, he's the one who can go up and come down with it, finds a way to get to the football. And the offensive line has given them time in the pocket to have that uncovering late. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage, too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. That's an excellent job right there on third down. Like any defense, you never want to let them get anything started, and that would have been a first down. Instead, you saw the contact on time, no penalty. And before this drive could get wings, it's fourth down. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. They fake the give. Now Kaepernick steps away. And this is caught. It's Brown. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. A good grab there by the former Central Michigan man, Antonio Brown. And he ate up some real estate on the catch, too, didn't he? I think the most impressive part of it, though, if there's a chance for him to get the football, even though he was covered well, he somehow finds a way to get it. And he's going to be out down inside the 20 at the 15.
Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Into the red zone now. Kaepernick forced out to his left. And that's going to be caught from Brown's touchdown. Antonio Brown, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Browns add six to their lead. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and it's now 14 to nothing. So that drives seven plays in length, and it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And he'll just take a seat, and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. Kenny Galladay making his way back onto the field with the rest of this offense. You better believe that he's well aware he has zero catches right now, and they're losing, so he's probably a little hungry. And you know the guys on defense are aware as well, and they're really excited that he has no catches, but they're also worried because a lot of times, that's like the ticking time bomb. The longer you hold him down, when he finally explodes, look out. Yeah, no catches, though, so far in this game. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Card out of throw. That's caught over the middle, Hooper. Now the Steelers use the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. From the gun, it's Carr. Throw left side complete. That's Williams. It'll be a gain of five, and that'll bring up second down. Now the Steelers are going to use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in this first half of action. To throw again on second down. Carr, he gets it to Sims, complete. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. So we are at halftime here on Halloween. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, make sure you avoid the crazies out there and welcome in everybody to this Halloween edition of our EA Sports Halftime Report. We begin our journey up at MetLife Stadium, Cincinnati in town, to take on New York. And that's been a back and forth game, all tied in the second quarter. From there, we'll make the trip down to Indianapolis to check on the Colts at home at Lucas Oil Stadium. And you can see they have the lead over the visiting Tennessee Titans. Michael Gallup, a touchdown reception. Finally, let's get down to Houston. Check on the Texans at home at NRG Stadium. And they have the lead in that one over the visiting LA Rams. Keenan Allen, a touchdown reception. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back and forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Browns are going to get the second half kickoff, and they've got this lead as well as we are back and underway. This fielded right at the goal line. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. The Browns drive about to get started. Hey, Charles, they've got the lead. Put your coaching hat on here now. What's the game plan for the second half? I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half 
They didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it. But I think these first couple of drives, they'll want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities. And I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them in the locker room at halftime. And he's going to have a Browns first down as he's got this up to the 45-yard line. A first down carry for Henry. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Jamin Davis, the rookie first-round pick, in on the tackle. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. From the gun, it's Kaepernick. And quickly to Kelsey. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. Throwing is Kaepernick on third down. That's complete. It's Gordon. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. One of my old teammates called me the other day when he was watching the game. He's like, man, try to watch an NFL game and trying to account for their passing game? That's difficult. And just when you think you get everything covered, here comes a back out of the backfield. And in this case, he picks up a first down. Here's the backup now, the former Badger, Melvin Gordon. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. On play action, it's Kaepernick rolling to his right. Open man, it's the tight end, Kelsey. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 16. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. That grab another career milestone for him. 900 career catches now. All right, the applause is beginning, right? The applause is going on. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Derrick Henry hitting double digits with his 10th touchdown of the season. And the Browns take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Tucker with the extra point, and that makes the score 21 to zip. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And here we are almost through three quarters of play, and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm. Put it mildly because they're not even over 100 yards yet. And in today's NFL, where it's a pass-first league, that is quite surprising. Not many teams patient enough to stick with the run. Everybody wants to advance the ball through the air. They've got to get their timing back. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Again, it's Williams. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. And a run like that shouldn't surprise anyone who's ever seen Javante Williams play. Compact, strong, physical runner. He ran for 1,000 yards in North Carolina last year. In fact, there's over 1,100 and 19 touchdowns in addition. And that's despite sharing the backfield with another 1,000-yard rusher, Michael Carter, who was taken in the fourth round by the Jets. Najee Harris and Travis Etienne were taking over him. But many thought that Javante Williams might be the best back in the draft. Now, after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. While well, the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh, so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. From midfield, here's Carr. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Credit the sack to Jonathan Hankins. And that is going to do it for the 
this third quarter of action. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. On second and 15 now, Carr, he'll get this to Lazard. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. And that was yardage that they needed there after the sack on first down. They didn't get all of it back, but now they look at third down as a manageable situation, one that they have a much better chance of picking up. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on third and three. Carr going to throw. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. Car now on first down. Now this one pulled in. Again, it's Hooper. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. You got the big lead defensively. Willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch. Inbounds. Keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Again, it's Carr. Looking sideline incomplete. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. To throw again on second down. Carr, he's going to go up top for the end zone. And this is going to be intercepted. It's the former Patriot, Devin McCourty. And the Browns are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. So here are the Browns to take over. They've got the lead right now, and remember, they are riding that very impressive seven-game winning streak, trying to push it to eight. He's going deep for Brown, and it is incomplete. Good positioning there downfield to break that one up. Back to the air on second down. It's Kaepernick. Open man here. It's the tight end, Kelsey. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They'll try and choose some clock with Henry. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. They'll run it again with Henry. Runs over it. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. On third down, Henry. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They've got a fourth down here in a game that looks to have been decided already. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And they unfortunately are staring at a mini losing streak developing, trailing here in the fourth quarter. This would be their third straight defeat. They go over the middle, and it's complete to start the drive. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. From the 29, Carr. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. Carr to throw on third and one. They'll find Galladay. That's complete. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. 
This one swung out to Williams. Three yards the gain there, second down. Shotgun now for Carr. Caught left side, Williams. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. So now a fresh set of downs, first and 10 after roughing the passer. Again, they'll throw with Carr. Quick hitter here, it's complete. That catch good for only a couple. They're gonna need to get up and set in a hurry. From the 17, Carr, and he's got his man on the out route. And the Steelers are going to be set up with a first and goal coming up as they get him down at the six-yard line. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in the game. Here's Carr to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And inside the five here before he's out of bounds, right at the three. Three yards the game there, second down. Throwing now is Carr. Got his man, it's caught for a Steelers touchdown. Kenny Galladay, his second touchdown on the season. And the Steelers are finally on the board here in the fourth quarter. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Gold with the extra point, and the lead will be cut down to 14. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a camper on this one. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number, kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. So a third and 10, and defensively, a dime look, six DBs. On play action, it's Kaepernick. And here is a leaping catch, he pulled it in. Now whistles and a timeout called here. Not sure of the point of this, but they'll stop it with four seconds to go in the game. And they will take a knee here. So Cleveland able to come away with the victory here. And it was their defense that really paved the way to this victory as they allowed the one touchdown, and that was all she wrote. Almost want to do the defense chant right now, right? Defense with a couple of claps in there, but no one wants to hear that from me. Let's just talk about how they got it done, though. When you take care of every aspect of the game, shut down the run, control the airways, right? Make sure the quarterback is harassed. This type of performance you get. They can't fashion together any offense, no consistency, and they just took control. So for the Browns, they continue to cruise as they move to 8-0 now on the campaign. And they will hit the road next week to take on the Cincinnati Bengals. Meanwhile, for the Steelers, they dip to 2-5 now with the loss. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves next week at home against the Chicago Bears. I'm Brandon Gordon. Certainly have to thank Charles Davis, my broadcast partner, and our entire crew.